easy chart analysis using the chart patterns sun, moon, and rising signs, written, produced, and directed by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. In this video, Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen explains an easy method of chart analysis. She discusses the seven basic chart patterns developed by Mark Edmund Jones. Dr. Mullen explains how the chart patterns and the sun, moon, and rising signs produce an accurate impression of personal characteristics. Next, Dr. Mullen demonstrates application of the chart patterns and the sun, moon, and rising signs. She uses four examples of natal horoscopes and chart patterns, beginning with Jimmy Buffett, who has a locomotive chart pattern, Agatha Christie, a bull pattern, Jack Kerouac, a seesaw pattern, and Helen Peters Noseworthy, the developer of the Ouija board, a splay pattern. Dr. Mullen will now explain and demonstrate the use of the seven chart patterns in association with the sun, moon, and rising sign in the natal chart. Quick and easy. That is the phrase we usually think of when trying to do serious astrology. The tip of the iceberg in astrology is, of course, the 12 basic zodiac signs, and there's a lot of truth to just considering those. However, it's a whole new world, a whole new depth to look at the birth chart in its entirety, but it's as complicated as learning another language, and too many people give up on trying to do quick and easy, more deep, astrological readings, but there is a way to do that. It's to look at the seven basic patterns the astrology charts can make. This was developed by a famous astrologer named Mark Edmund Jones, who lived from October 1st, 1888, until he lived a long, long time, until March 5th of 1980. So he had a long, rich life. And he's been called the Dean of American Astrology by the astrology crowd, which takes a lot because nobody likes to give anyone else enough credit sometimes in some branches of the astrology world. So the fact that Mark Edmund Jones lived to be nearly 100 and left with the, um, being the Dean of American Astrology behind his name was wonderful. He was a screenwriter and a theosophist and a Christian scientist, as well as an expert astrologer. He developed, by looking at patterns in the stars and patterns in nature, a system of reading a horoscope at a glance and getting a whole life theme in a couple of minutes, even if you can't read any of the mysterious glyphs we use in astrology. And that was by looking at the seven basic patterns that he developed. And the seven basic patterns involve just looking at the birth chart, not trying to read whether you're looking at Venus or Mars or Pluto, whether it's an Aries, whatever, but to um, look at the pattern that's created and then correlate it with the seven basic patterns. Just as a review, we have a longer video posted about this. One of the patterns is the seesaw and this is um, the pattern that looks like a bow tie. You're pulled in two different directions, always looking for balance. Then there's the bowl, and this represents synthesizing harmony and balance. That's when all of the planets are just in six houses in one half of the chart. Then there's the bucket, where there's one planet all by itself, and the others are all clustered on the other end. And this shows where the whole life is kind of um, directed by the, the planet that's in the bucket, or the handle. <clears throat> then we have the splash, scattered all over the chart. It's sort of the butterfly, uh, diverse interests, the dilettante, master of um, master of none and a Jill or, Jer, Jill or Joe of many. Then there's the bundle when all the planets are in four houses and close together. That's the highly specialized person. 
And then there's the locomotive, where all the planets are in two-thirds of the chart, and one planet, which is at the side of the chart that moves forward, is called the engine or the locomotive, and that's a very high, intense, high-energy chart, and it shows there's a strong direction, a sense of purpose. Last of all, we have the splay chart. And the splay chart is the one that has at least two um, conjunctions, but everything else is sort of scattered around. Conjunctions are planets that are clustered together. So that's a quick view of the seven patterns. If you can learn those and just look at the sun, the moon, and the rising sign, we have another video out about that. You can do a really good, impressive reading in just a glance at the chart. <clears throat> and also, it takes a long time to fully interpret a whole horoscope, which is worthwhile, but everybody has attention deficit order disorder nowadays and wants fast food, fast astrology, where well, you can accommodate your friends or even your clients if you're a professional astrologer by mastering the seven basic patterns. Let's go to Margaritaville, which I have illustrated here for you. Margaritaville, what do you think of? Jimmy Buffett, of course. Jimmy Buffett was a Capricorn born December 25th of 1946, 108 a.m. in Pascagoula, Mississippi. Here is his natal chart at a glance. Now, thinking of the patterns, thinking of the basic patterns, which one do you see here for Mr. Buffett and Margaritaville? A wild and joyful life. People Magazine said he led um, after he passed away suddenly. And we can look at the magic of his chart here by just seeing what the basic pattern is going to be. Um, he has a locomotive chart. And the locomotive is the planet that is leading all of these, or the luminary. In his case, it's the Capricorn moon. Jimmy was a double Capricorn. That means he had the sun and moon in Capricorn, and his sun is conjunct Mars, the energy planet. Uh, he had a career as a stockbroker for a while. He was very well educated, although he didn't act like he was, which means that he was very smart. He learned, um, he was um, at Cornell University, and he, um, it doesn't, he can't be an idiot and get admitted to Cornell. While he was there, he picked up a guitar in um, his fraternity house one night and totally quit going to classes because he was so fascinated by the guitar. And he mastered it and started playing songs. And then later on, he went back to get a degree at the University of Alabama, I think in finance, but he worked a lot with numbers and finance. Seeing all of that, let's take a look at just the locomotive pattern. This is someone whose theme of life is very driven in one direction. And so you can kind of see that theme. What else is going on in the birth chart? His ascendant of Libra shows his artistry. He wrote a best-selling book, Tales from Margaritaville, you know, which was Key West, of course. And he wrote several other books. His um, Saturn is in the sign of Leo, and his sun is in Capricorn. The Sun rules Leo and Saturn rules Capricorn. They're in each other's ruling signs. Jimmy has something called a mutual reception, which makes him a closet Leo. Can't you see that? Thinking of him as a performer, the songs, the sun, Margaritaville, the beach. Is that Leo or is that Capricorn? That's very Leo. So the mutual reception gives you um, another bit of depth. You can see the locomotive, the sun, moon, and rising sign in the Capricorn and the Libra. And if you go just a little bit further, this will get you started. Um, he has three retrograde placements. You can see the little R in the background. And there's um, also a Venus-Jupiter conjunction in Scorpio. 
the Scorpio, he had a very wild life um, and a divorce and a lot of other crazy things in his personal life and bouts of heavy partying. But the Venus-Jupiter conjunction is very refined and very artistic. So he had that side too. If you begin by looking at the pattern, you can see all of that. And the restless energy of his life theme is really suggested by the locomotive. Next, we're going to look at the bowl chart. And our example here is Dame Agatha Christie, the queen of the mystery novel. Um, Dame Agatha Christie was born on September 15th of 1890. And she was born in Torquay, England at 2.14 p.m. Dame Edith um, died in 1976, and during the course of her long and eventful life, um, we can see some really wonderful astrological correlations. First of all, she was born with a Sagittarius ascendant and Mars rising. She was a very assertive, dynamic person, and she often um, related well to animals and in fact would even have animal images in some of her novels. And the Sagittarius emphasis is the emphasis also on spirituality and religion. Miss Marple lived in a village that was very much church-centered, for example. The Sagittarius ascendant is faraway places, foreign ways of life, and there is Hercule Perrault who everybody said was French, and he would say, oh no, I'm Belgian. And so you can see the Sagittarius ascendant there. Agatha was a Virgo with the sun conjunct Saturn in Virgo. She had health trouble as a child, and she began writing while she was kind of confined to bed rest for part of her life. She also had some very serious issues to cope with, which with her first husband, that's the Sun-Saturn conjunction, and she was um, very much detail-oriented, very much a perfectionist. She wrote a hundred different. Um, she wrote a hundred books and um, many different short stories. At least fourteen short stories, and so many many things that she wrote. Agatha Christie fans still today collect her books. She was born into an upper middle class family, and she was a voracious reader, which um, many people who are often novelists often are. She um, wanted to help people, old and young people, um, and she felt as though her books would allow her to do that. Gramophones, smoking and drinking, all kinds of those different images are characteristic of her time and appear in her novels. She had a Libra moon conjunct Mercury and Uranus. Many really brilliant people will have a Mercury-Uranus conjunction. And of course, the depth of her stories and the intricacy and everything very much shows Mercury the mind near the planet Uranus. Her Venus was in Scorpio, the sign of mystery. She focused a lot on poisons and poisoning in many of her novels. That's Virgo, the sign of diet, with Venus and Scorpio emphasis. And so all of her placements are in one portion of the chart which shows a bowl. She was very focused on mystery, the intellect, and the writing. And so we can see in looking at Dame Agatha Christie that even if you couldn't read the chart in its entirety, if you just look at the bowl pattern and think of her life, you know, it's very possible that you will... Oh, we have a mysterious call coming in from the other side. Thank you, Agatha. Very often spirit entities will communicate through the electronics and I think she's communicating with us because the phone is turned off, everyone. Believe that if you want to, but it is. And so, at any rate, um, mis mystical things do happen with the world of electronics and the world of astrology, all of which are ruled by Uranus, and that's very prominent in Dame Agatha Christie's chart. So, Virgo Sun, 
Libra Moon, she was concerned with law and justice. Sagittarius Rising, you can get the keynotes for those and then see that she's a bold pattern personality. You'll have a very, very good idea of who she is and what her life is really all about, or was really all about. Next we want to look at someone who was very famous in Florida and around the world, Jack Kerouac. Jack Kerouac was a member of the Beat Generation. The Beat Generation of people were born um, after World War I and before World War II, and they were part of um, a disenchanted, disillusioned, disen disenfranchised group looking for something different. There was um, a very um, unhappy idea about old values, overly restrictive lifestyles, um, defying the status quo to create a new reality. And if you think of the world of the beatnik, the beat generation, Kerouac's famous novel, On the Road, Ginsberg's poetry, and of course there was a lot with experimenting with psychedelics and other drugs and alcohol in um, this generation of people. Jack Kerouac was born March 12th of 1922, 5 o'clock p.m. in Lowell, Massachusetts. Many people felt he was Canadian, or thought he was, because he grew up in a French-speaking household, and he didn't speak any English at all until um, he went to elementary school. And so there's very much a French culture here. Jack Kerouac's horoscope is a seesaw chart. It shows all of the planets some um, clustered for the most part uh, in opposition to each other, and it functions like living on a teeter-totter, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, Jack Kerouac's son is in Pisces, and his moon was in Virgo. He was born just before a full moon, which shows he was an extrovert and also someone who didn't have a lot of patience, wanted to live life to the fullest. His rising sign, Ascendant, was also Virgo. So he had the moon rising in Virgo, very responsive to surroundings and to the environment. Uh, he was someone who was very intelligent, educated, but didn't live that type of a lifestyle at all. And he was um, definitely a person who wanted to make his writing, his lifestyle, an example to others. Think of William S. Burroughs, Allen, Allen Ginsberg, and you can kind of get the feeling of the stream of consciousness lifestyle. The Big Sur, the Dharma Bums, some of his writings show what it is to live outside the box. Of course, most of the people, particularly in that generation, couldn't and didn't, and yet um, Jack Kerouac managed to do that. Here in Florida, he lived in a small house in College Park with his mother because he was always broke. He abandoned all the women in his life and he saw his only daughter once. Is that being a beat generation person? Well, it definitely is reflected in his birth chart as a teeter-totter. If you just look and see that that's his pattern, that will help you a great deal in understanding him. Um, he also lived um, in just the back room of a small house in College Park on Clouser Street. College Park is a part of Orlando. And he shared a couple of bedrooms with his mother. And the house is still there. It's now preserved by the Jack Kerouac Society as a haven for writers. And what they do is it's a group of people who let aspiring writers who don't have enough money to live so that they can just dedicate themselves to writing. They're provided with a stipend and a place to live and also with a bicycle for getting around town if they don't have a car. And the Kerouac House takes, um, takes applications from different writers and then the writers are supposed to do a presentation. I went to one um, for a writer that um, 
came here from England in order to live in and write in the Kerouac house. And so the, the presentations are open to the public. The writer speaks about his or her work and then does a reading of what they've been working on while they're in the house, just to show they're not partying out and enjoying Central Florida. And the house is currently being renovated, so I've heard there's a temporary moratorium on accepting new applicants, but um, Jack Kerouac's um, writing desk is preserved there, and also his easy chair. He traveled all around the world. He loved cats and is often shown holding a pet cat, um, but his cats cleared up, cleared, clawed to pieces the easy chair. The easy chair is a brown, sort of a tweedy looking um, chair, and it is um, something I saw at the Jack Kerouac house because people who are really Kerouac scholars are very focused on getting to see the chair where Jack would sit um, when he would get his ideas about the brilliant original books that he wrote. Um, when he wasn't lying on the floor with a huge piece of brown paper, writing them all in pencil. You know, when we think of people using computer programs today and word processors to write all sorts of books, it's really interesting to think of all you really need is a pencil and um, a roll of brown paper to write on the road again. A real inspiration. And we can see his unusual chart in the teeter-totter pattern that, um, that typifies his life. Next, I have the horoscope of a lady who's been called the mother of the Ouija board. Now, her name was Helen Peters Noseworthy. Isn't that a great name? Um, and we don't have a birth time for her. I've selected this chart just because she's so interesting, but also to show that you can do an accurate horoscope without having an actual birth time. And so Helen Peters Noseworthy, um, I did a noon chart for her, which you'll see, but discard the houses and the rising sign. But you can see that she has a splay chart with everything kind of all over, but a couple of conjunctions. She had a Cancer Moon conjunct Mars, and she was a Virgo with the Sun, Venus, and Mercury conjunct from late Virgo to early Libra. And then she also had a Taurus stellum, Pluto, Saturn, and Uranus. But everything else is kind of splashed all over the chart, or a splay chart. And she's been called the mother of the Ouija board. Um, she was somebody who was involved in developing the Ouija board and also naming it. Everybody has wondered what the mysterious talking board's name means. It looks like yes in German and French, we oui and ja, and it also people have compared it to Egyptian languages, but according to the truth, Helen said that it just meant good luck and that she received the information in a vision or a dream. And she was very instrumental in designing the original Ouija board and in um, also developing the patent and the different steps that got it started as a tool to be used in spiritualism. The poor Ouija board has a very bad reputation. It doesn't deserve at all. Many people feel it's evil, but it's no more evil than the telephone, which can be very evil if you think about it. It's just misusing the board, which is a way to literally tap into the spirit world. And at the, na at the time Helen was working with the Ouija board, spiritualism was on the rise. It was after um, the Civil War, after World War I, and people of all different types were very um, involved in trying to communicate with all the loved ones that they had lost on the other side. And the actual board, um, the birth date I think is 1902, but again, that was after the Civil War, and then the popularity accelerated after so many people lost so many loved ones in World War I, and has continued. It's always good to say 
a short affirmation like, if you're sitting with a Ouija board, I want the highest and the best to be allowed to enter. Say that three times. I want the highest and the best to be allowed to enter. I want the highest and the best to be allowed to enter. That will save you from having a bad experience. And also, no heavy partying. When you're going to use a Ouija board, definitely you want to be sober, serious, and focused because it's like calling random numbers in the phone book. You don't know who you'll get. There's a wonderful tombstone that I will show you here that has has, that it's shaped like a Ouija board, and it's dedicated to Helen, and it has her, her dates on it. She lived from 1851 to 1940. And the founders of the Ouija board, different people who worked with it um, in its development, are all listed underneath Helen's dates on the Ouija board shaped tombstone. Don't you love that? Wouldn't that be a great tombstone? I may copy that idea. I'm not planning to check out anytime soon, but it's kind of interesting to think of that. Well, we're going all over with a splay chart, so I've definitely given you example an example here in talking about Helen Peters' Noseworthy of a splay chart. She has many retrograde planets. Neptune, Pluto, Saturn, Uranus, and Mercury, all retrograde. So she was involved in other different interests in her life, but she always returned, think of RE, to be an advocate of the Ouija board and to promote the Ouija board. This chart is very interesting in that it has an extremely rare conjunction of Pluto, Saturn, and Uranus. Pluto is the afterlife, Saturn is tangibles, and Uranus is innovation. Those planets are all within three degrees of each other, and that very much characterizes her life. The Moon-Mars conjunction in Cancer um, indicates she had a very stormy personal life, but her family was important to her. She lived most of her life in Baltimore, Maryland, and that was where the Ouija board was first produced by the William Fald Company. Um, and Helen, of course, was a promoter and a shareholder in that company. And the Virgo influence would be characteristic of words and expressing ideas. Just a very interesting way of looking at how to quickly do a birth chart without having all of the houses, the aspects to deal with right away, and the signs of so many things other than the sun and the moon and the rising sign. In Helen's chart, again, we weren't able to use the ascendant because of not having an accurate birth time. I'm Dickie Jo, astrologer, uh, a teaching astrologer, and also a consulting astrologer in Orlando, Florida, encouraging you to learn to recognize just the basic patterns of the chart, and then to look at the sun, moon, and rising sign, so you too can do a wonderful, accurate reading without having to go into the netherlands of words like partile and quincunx, and that's just the tip, inum chaley, medium chaley, it goes on and on and on. So don't feel that you're cheating yourself because there's so much in the world of astrology out there that we can barely touch on the videos, but this will help to give you a jump start. Reverend Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen, astrologer, psychic, and parapsychologist. Dr. Mullen provides the following services, astrology, psychic, rune, and tarot card readings, face-to-face -face and Zoom readings and seances, and webinars and face-to-face -face presentations. Thank you for watching. Reverend Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen can be contacted at her skymaiden at juno.com email address. She also has a Facebook page, which she invites you to view, and her WordPress site, where she has additional resources.